Hello Year 7s, it's Mr Omara here. Some of you have been doing some very good work putting together surveys for your MESH assignment, particularly the HAPE assignment, which is to do with how people exercise and fitness and so forth. But I wanted to give you some tips to help you improve those surveys and make them even better. I guess the first question, and something that we've only given a little bit of time to in class, is why we do surveys. Now these people in this picture are doing a different type of survey than you're doing, but they still do it for the same reason. If we want to know what's going on out in the world and we want specific information, which if we're working on a building site or buying or selling land or just constructing something, we need to know exactly what's going on. And there's only so much you can get from estimating or sitting around discussing it or just having an opinion. If you actually want to know for sure what's going on out there, you go out and survey it, which basically means you collect data. So these guys are going out and getting hard data because when you're spending millions of dollars on a building, you want to make sure it's sitting on your land and not going into your neighbour's land. So that's why you do a survey. Likewise, when you're collecting information about what people think or do, rather than just having a general opinion about what you think or what you perceive, then you go and actually collect data in your survey. Often surveys are about what people think. Often they're about what they do. But some surveys are about very specific data, you know, they will ring and ask you, you know, how much you weigh, how tall you are. Um, it's not just about your opinions. So you can survey about all kinds of things. It doesn't just have to be about what people think. Now, when it comes to constructing a survey, there are vague questions and more of you are creating vague questions than you realize. There are all right questions and then there are good questions. And obviously we're going to try and steer you towards asking good questions. But I want to talk to you a little bit so that you can tell the difference. Here is a fairly typical question that I've seen people asking. And they've gone around and asked people and recorded it carefully and made a beautiful graph. So all that stuff's really good. But things like running or walking. Now if I just bowl up to you with my pad and say running or walking, you're going to probably going to give me an answer particularly if you're not me. I'm very particular about this sort of thing, but many of you will just say, oh yeah, walking, or oh yeah, running. But you will think that the question might be something different because there's not really enough information in it. You might think that the person is in fact asking this question about enjoyment, this question about burning calories, I guess, and this question about health impacts. But unless they actually ask you a specific targeted question, then you're not going to know, and they're not going to know what they collected information on. You could have answered any of those questions, and different people in the group might have answered different questions. So you need to be really, really clear. As a rule, if you ask general questions, you will only get general answers, and while generals are good for armies, they're not good for your surveys. So if you want to know what somebody thinks, ask them a question specifically about the thing you want to know. You know, if you want to know how tall they are, then you need to say, how tall are you in centimetres without your shoes on? Because you know what, you can throw your data out. A general question is not a good thing. But if you have a targeted question, something specific, then you're going to get information or more information that hits that target. So look at each one of your questions and think, am I getting the data that I think that I'm getting here? There is a general rule called G-I-G-O, which is not like the old ad for, I think it was Yellow Pages, which is G-I-G-G-O. This is garbage in, garbage out. If you put garbage questions into your survey, you will only get garbage data out. If you only put general in, you will only get general out. So, question quality is really important. Before you've even asked a single person a question, look good and hard at those questions and make sure they're not garbage. So, here is a slightly better question. Would you prefer to run or walk, sorry, to walk or run two kilometres? Now this is what we call a closed question because there are in fact only three answers to this. So I've said that and it only allows for particular answers. So for that last one you can answer, I'd prefer to run, I'd prefer to walk, or neither. The beauty of a closed question is it's very easy to graph and present this data. You can quickly say 70% of people said walk, 20% of people said run, and 10% of people said neither, based on it. But, for all you know, people might that be out there doing all kinds of exercise, and you can't tell from that question because it doesn't allow for all possible answers. 
there might be a boot scooting revolution on on out there and people are getting lots of exercise boot scooting and if you don't know what that is then I don't know Google it but it's incredibly hard work um, and they're getting lots of exercise but you're not picking it up because you've asked a closed question there is a place for closed questions but be careful that that's what you want that you're only assuming that there's a universe of two possibilities pa parents I use this you use it with your kids do you want to go to this park or that park you're not allowing for them to choose anything else. You're just saying, here are all the possibilities in the world. But you're doing it actually to cut people off from saying, no, I want to go and spend money or I want to go and do something else. So close questions, cut off avenues of information and be aware that that's what you want to do. So here is a slightly better close question. How many minutes of the week do you run or how many minutes in a week do you run? So then you're not just getting information about whether somebody prefers running, you're getting information about how many minutes they actually spend doing it. Because I think you'd agree there is a difference between somebody who runs for 15 seconds a day to get on a bus and somebody who runs for an hour a day because that's what they do. Likewise, how many minutes a week do you walk? And if you compare both of those questions, you could actually say the people in this survey spent more time running than walking, although I doubt that you get that response, or the people in the survey burnt more calories running than walking. Uh, and again, frankly, I think you'd be lucky to get that response. But you've got better data. They're still closed because you're asking people about minutes. You're not just saying, where do you run to or what do you think about running? But you're getting better data than just, which do you prefer? So th I think that's a reasonably good question. And I would hope that yours are at about that level. Next up, you can, in fact, ask people to rank things in order. So you could say, rank these in the order that you would like to do them. Uh, running, swimming, archery, tennis. And then you can actually say, oh, 30% of people picked running as their top option. But it gives you um, a more rich information. Again, it's not garbage. You can say, oh, not only do people prefer running, but they liked it better than the following options. And again, you can talk in specifics. So consider getting people to rank things. Now, an open question. Lots of the time people talk about open questions as if they are in fact better questions. But I don't think that that's necessarily true. But there are times when an open question is a really good question to ask. For instance, what exercise do you do? They might say running, they might say walking, they might say Tai Chi, they might say yoga, uh, they might just say oh, I play footy or I play cricket or you know I go bushwalking. But you could get thousands of different answers. And if you really want to know what the landscape of people's exercise is, don't just ask them about your two favourite sports. Because even the top two or three sports would only cover a small section of the exercise that people do, because it's such a big open field. So if you ask people a question, what exercise do you do, you'll get a lot more variety in your answers. Now, that makes it harder to graph and present. Your nice running versus walking graph is going to be a nice clean graph, but it's not going to cover most of what people do. So open questions tend to give you stuff that is harder to present. It's good to have, but harder to present. But it is much richer information. So here we are at the end. We know what a quality question is. We know that if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. We know that open questions get you lots of data about things that you might not expect. And closed questions give you um, specific data, but it closes out all that stuff you might not expect, and that is the end. So go and work on your survey.